You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Have you ever heard the phrase, you fight fire with fire? Then should you not fight monsters with a monster? Today, we are going to be talking about The Witcher, a massively famous open world RPG book series, HBO show. This is a part of our HBO series, and we're going to get right into it. Our favorite mutant, Geralt of Rivia, well, our favorite non-comic book mutant, Geralt of Rivia, (laughs) and... I, TJ Blackwell, uh, will be one of your hosts today. I'm here with the one and only Mr. Christian Ashley. Thanks, TJ. And let's talk about it. So a couple years ago, The Witcher came out on uh, Netflix, was it? And Mm -hmm. they were just like, you know, massively successful three games based on a not very successful book, to be frank. At least Uh, here in America. Yeah, not here. At the time. See, that's the great thing about uh, CD Projekt Red. They're in Poland. Something does really well in Poland, Project Red's going to get their hands on it. And thank God for that, you know, recent games aside. <laughs> so, Christian, what is, what's your exposure with The Witcher? Let's see, for me, I bought the first two games on a Steam sale forever ago while I was in college. I played through the first one, and I... It just wasn't a game built for me. So I gave up on it and said, you know, this is too hard. I want to do something else. I just didn't understand the mechanics. Uh, and then later on, The Witcher 3, I had heard like rave reviews. And it's, and I, a lot of people said, look, if you hated those other games, this is okay. It's a lot different. So I got into that, fell in love. I actually just finished a, uh, another playthrough with the new update and everything that they provided for free. I loved it again. I have not read the novels I've watched only the first season of The Witcher, and that's about it for me. Yeah, I, that is, that absolutely has to be the most common experience with The Witcher. Except I'm sure a lot of people just started with The Witcher 3. Yeah. Yeah. And most people did not continue to watch The Witcher season 2. <laughs> In my experience, yes. Yeah. Me me personally, it was, you know, as a, as a teenager, young teenager, pro- I was probably 14. You know, walk around GameStop, see what's cheap. And what was cheap was The Witcher 2 Enhanced Edition. So I loved The Witcher 2. Uh, I went back, tried to play The Witcher 1 a few months ago. Wasn't having it. That's a different game. They, they really have improved on the series as it went. But loved The Witcher 2. Played it for a few hundred hours. Fantastic game. The Witcher 3 came out. That was still how I bought games, by seeing what was cheap. So I did not get to play it until... Uh, <laughs> you know, just a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, but absolute masterclass of an RPG. And then The Witcher came on, uh, released Netflix. And uh, me and some other friends that loved The Witcher and games were like, yeah, we have to watch this. Obviously, we'll watch it together. Uh, you know, we'll do one a week. And that did lasted maybe three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's honestly really difficult for me to review the show. From a non-biased point of view, I completely agree. Yeah, it's hard. I remember so little of it. Uh, some of it I think I'm willfully ignoring because I want it to be untainted, my view of The Witcher. And the show is not helping. And I, this is not a bash session. And that's not why we came here today. We do enjoy The Witcher. We do enjoy aspects of it. So if you're out there and you're enjoying what's happening with the show right now we're not trying to say you're dumb for your opinions we just want to say that out loud real quick yeah i will probably pick it back up i will go back i'll watch it when i find time that's something i have very little of so it'll be a while i just got the new avatar book oh nice i probably won't pick it up again because there are too many other things out there i could better spend my time with and from the interviews i've been reading from the head writers it doesn't feel to me like they care about the source material that much. So I don't have to care either. Yeah, I did. I do like Henry Cavill as Geralt. Oh, that's perfect casting. A, yeah. a man who cares about the role, who wanted to do it so well. And unfortunately, he got screwed over. And I feel so bad for him, not only with this, but also for losing the role of Superman with the reshuffling in DC. But apparently yeah. he's 
part of a Warhammer 40K series, which I've never been a part of that fandom, but I know he's a huge fan. So I'm looking forward to that for him. Yeah, 40K is awesome. Warhammer is so sick. The The only reason I'm not really into it is because I know for a fact I would spend way too much money. I feel that. Those sets are expensive, man. Uh, crack would be cheaper. Crack is cheaper. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Yeah, I think the cheapest set, like army I've seen was like 70 something dollars, $80. Hmm. I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong spot, but I'd absolutely buy it is my problem. So it's anyway. better you stay away. Oh, yeah, I have to. I, you know, I know some of the lore, though. Awesome series. Great Space Marines. Uh, where do you think The Witcher really w- went wrong for us? I mean, for me, I mean, I mentioned it earlier. It just seems like the head writers of the show just got something so they could have the art a fan base was already established but instead of the telling the stories of that same fandom that they all cared about they just decided i'm going to use my own original ideas for it to an extent they do bring up some of the stuff from the books like i've read summaries of them but it just feels like they did it just so they could get what they wanted out versus like what people were coming for yeah yeah and it's i get it it's exciting. You know you're going to make money. And there's stories to be told in the universe that haven't been told yet. But you got to establish something first. I mean, and this does have precedent. I mean, essentially, the games are fan fiction mm-hmm. compared to the books. And for the most part, I'd say they're well done fan fiction. So this is established within the Witcher fandom as something that could be done. Uh, unfortunately, this is not what was delivered, in my opinion. Yeah. And there are some fantastic things that came out of the show. Uh, I think most of the fight choreography was stellar from what I saw. Fight choreography is amazing. And uh, the the music, Dandelion, I thought, I I cannot remember the actor who played Dandelion. I thought he did a good job. I was a fan. Absolutely. Toss a coin. I mean, I have that on my playlist. It's an excellent song. Yeah. Banger track. Big misstep, though, in my opinion, as far as most of the rest of the series. Uh, yeah. You know, they had Triss's thing going on. Ah, oh, let's discuss that. I mean, how, how do we feel about the idea of colorblind casting for a live action production that is not in theater or voice acting? Uh, that's fine. That doesn't really matter to me uh, unless for some reason uh, it's integral to the character. Then, uh, you know, it should stay accurate. But generally speaking, that doesn't that does not register to me as a, a problem. I can understand it being a problem, but it, it just really annoys me when you know it's done on purpose versus like we legitimately thought this was the best person for the role. And instead of that, they wanted to uh, some, uh, some, not all, wanted to bring up controversy so people would be talking about it, generate interest so that people would, you know, you know, boycott it or people would actually watch the show because of the controversy. Um, and it's just one of those things. I, it's just a factor of life in Hollywood right now. They're going to do it for the sake of, you know, they're going to say for the sake of diversity versus, you know, they think they're going to get more seats on the watching the screen. And it really annoys me, especially, I mean, most recently the trend has been like to kill off redheads in favor of people of color. And yeah. you know what? It I understand casting redheads is hard because they're very low significant uh, low portion of the population and then on top of that to have someone being a competent actor or actress in that role is even harder and then you get in the whole well you can can you dye someone's hair and is that okay to cast as a redhead especially you know with comics and the like redheads are very big focus and in the witcher we have shawnee we have tris i don't know if shawnee showed up yet in the series but tris was changed in the, the first season and well the whole thing so <laughs> Like I said, it, it's annoying, but I know what I'm getting into. So I'm not going to be one of those people like picketing the show. Like that's the reason I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, uh, really. I feel like if they had given Henry Cavill a better supporting cast, which didn't really feel like a supporting cast a lot of the time. And that that's part of my problem with watching it. It's like I, I want this to be about Geralt. And a lot of times it just did not feel like it was. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. But, with a, with a stronger supporting cast, I think the show could have done a lot better. And I love I love the actress for Yennefer. 
and I love the actress for Siri. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, Jennifer, you can argue this is a bit of a shrew in the books and in the games. You know what? That's just who she is. And she's unabashedly, that's who she is. But then they make it, she also has redeeming moments in the games, in the books, where you see, like, part of that is a facade. Part of that, you know, is her trying to put on, you know, this performance so she doesn't get hurt or she avoids conflict or stuff like that sometimes. And in the show, uh, especially from what I've read of what happens in the second season, it just makes you like an outright villain sometimes it feels. Yeah. Yeah. I read a quote earlier today that said, humans are born everywhere. Humanity is not. Mm. Which uh, I think really hits home to actually one of the core themes of The Witcher is that sometimes the monsters are not the monsters. Sometimes Geralt has to kill the monsters with a steel sword instead of the silver one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things about a series that sometimes it gets bogged down a bit too much and it feels nihilistic sometimes. And that's really annoying to me as someone... Not that you can't have nihilism at all as a subject in your material, but when I'm reading plot summaries of the books, I don't feel a lot of hope. And I don't and I think that's one of the points he's trying to make is, you know, people are evil, people are monsters, and you know, it's just a bad world. And it's obvious from there you just get a sense of a man who has no hope in the future, has uh, from what I believe, has no faith in Christ. And it's kind of fairly self evident right there of why he is led this way. Yeah. It's, I feel like that's actually a super common theme in Polish media, which you might think you haven't consumed a lot of, but the Witcher cyberpunk, uh, stalker, great games, fantastic games. All of it is, you know, it gets to a point where it's basically saying, Hey, uh, basically every human sucks a lot. Even Metro. I mean, which makes a lot of sense considering the source. I mean, living behind the Iron Curtain for all those years, you know, being Russia's, the Soviet Union's punching bag, you know, along Hungary and Ukraine and all that for all that time. You get a sense of why there's a very huge lack of hope within a populace. Yeah, yeah. And it, I get it, you know. Uh, I'm Lithuanian. Lithuanian Independence Day was just a couple of days ago. I understand. Russia bad, <laughs> historically speaking. Um, but Russia's not everybody, you know. Yes. Hopefully. But was there, you know, forget the show. Was there anything from the game that really spoke to you? Uh, from the game, a, a sense of found family is one of those things that is a recurring theme, especially in a third game. And, you know, you don't have to be defined by who your parents are. You don't have to be defined by the people that just happen to be around you. It's the people who maintain relationships with you, who are willing to fight with you and over it doesn't have to be the wild hunt, but, you know, just the odds are against you. And those people there are who your true friends are, the people are going to look after you. And I love that part of the game because that does fill me with hope. Yeah. Yeah. They really, they really get that right in The Witcher 3. And it's, it's just, it's so good. If you haven't played The Witcher 3, uh, even if you're not a fan of like open world RPGs, I say, give it a shot. You can pick it up for pretty cheap these days. And you know, PS4, Xbox One, Series S, PS5, any of it, PC. Do you remember Quinn is your friend? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Geralt really shows all the time uh, openness, willingness to dialogue. Geralt will change his opinion if you can convince him that he's wrong. And that's a huge part of the game, too. Uh, well, the series as a whole is people's public perception of witchers as being this uncaring, unfeeling monsters in human form that if you tell them do this, they'll do it if you just pay them money. But in the games you can prove over and over again, uh, Geralt can choose to save a succubus. He can choose to save a Doppler and so on and so forth. He can choose to save human lives as well instead of being doing what he was told and what he was paid for. And it just shows to him his strength of character that even as people are, you know, throwing stuff at him or uh, refusing to pay him for what he did, that he doesn't give up. Yeah. Compassion really goes a long way in real life. And in The Witcher 3, personally, I think it's the best way to play. Let most of them live. But it's a it's a really valuable lesson for The Witcher to be teaching and for us to take away from it. And Absolutely. maybe we should... Maybe we should treat the show with a little bit more of, of that Witcher compassion. <laughs> I, 
I mean, maybe not. I'm willing to. It's going to be hard, but I'm willing to. Yeah. So we'll 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 go into this with a spirit of Geraltness and try to understand where it's coming from and maybe convince others to, you know, turn their cheek, take it for what it is. Uh, but if it's bad, uh, that's, you know, that's up to you. I'm sure a lot of people really love this show. And yeah, I mean, if once again, if you're one of those people, please don't hear this as a bash, uh, bash session. Like, let us know in the comments uh, on Facebook or on Discord as well. Like, where did we go wrong in our review? We would love to hear that. I mean, I am well open to hearing constructive criticism. Mm-hmm. So please, have I at. love negative feedback. <laughs> I really do. He thrives on it. It it gives me life. Like Darth Nihilus, negative feedback. That's all for me. But uh, seriously, let us know like what we aren't getting. Do we need to read the books to understand the show? Is that what we're missing? We didn't read the books enough? Because I can change that and I can try it again. So uh, email me, thomasblackwell35 at gmail.com. Any concerns, questions, or complaints about The Witcher as a, a triune? We would like to invite you to rewatch it with us, even. We might get a watch party started. Probably not. Everyone should watch it at their own pace, I think. This is going to be a chore. And uh, when is the third to... season releasing? Great question. I think it's sometime this year. It's soon. Because this is the last one that Cavill filmed, and he's being replaced with which Hemsworth brother? Uh, it's not Chris. Uh, is it? I'd have to look it up. Liam. Liam. Okay. Liam. Which uh, he looks pretty good. He looks all right. I mean, if you have to recast, yeah, he looks fine. Yeah, he's no Cavill, but we'll see. That remains to be seen. Season four with Liam Hemsworth might be the best one, and we're gonna find out because we're gonna watch it all again. <laughs> Or we're going to watch most of it for the first time, to be completely honest. But we're going to watch season one again and then continue. So, so Christian, if you had to choose one school of Witcher to join, which one would huh. you choose? I'm trying to remember the schools because the cat school ended up being a bunch of assassins along the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, not too sure I'd be keen on that one. I can't remember what happened to the Griffin. I mean, the easy answer is to say the wolf because, you know, you have Vesemir leading you there. Uh, he's a very you know, smart guy, a very caring man. So if you had to have someone as a, a teacher, I'd love to have him. Yeah. How about you? Vesemir is awesome. Did you watch the movie that came out not too long ago? The animated movie? I, I have not. Oh, it's good. Okay. And this is oh, him yeah, like too. in his younger years? Mm-hmm. Young Vesemir. Okay. And, spoiler alert, really young Geralt. Okay. So pre pre his uh, Trial of the Grasses? A little bit. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, I'm going to go with School of the Viper uh, purely for ease of life purposes. You know, you don't have to fight that hard if you can just poison something. Very true. And, you know, I feel I'm not getting enough fulfillment from Hogwarts Legacy as far as mixing potions goes. (laughs) So I got to I got to try in real life, but not in a chemistry. Just like eight or so potions in the game. Maybe not even that much. Yeah. And you don't even get to do like a cool mini game. You think there's uh, anything else that that weighs on you about The Witcher that you'd like to talk about? Other than the soundtrack, the games, the soundtrack and the games? Incredible. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, I think we do need to do an episode on the actual video game at some point in time, even though we kind of halfway did that on this one. So sorry for anyone who was expecting only uh, discussion on the series proper, uh, the show. But yeah, that's about where I'm at on, on The Witcher series. So sorry to be negative, but it's just how I feel. Yeah. As a as a last note, before we wrap up, I'll say if we're ranking uh, DLC of all time, uh, The Witcher 3's DLC is is pretty high on that list. Blood and Stone, Blood and One, Heart of Stone. Mine. Amazing, amazing DLC. So, well, we want to know when you're sitting down to binge a series like this, you're going to force your way through. Uh, what are you grabbing to help you through it? Popcorn? Bag of chips? Those little nerds clusters with the, that's, you know, it's basically like a chopped up nerds rope. Those are delicious. Try those out. But let us know. Uh, I don't like sweets. I just, I prefer to get the biggest cup I can find and just sip on that when I watch shows. Uh, what about you, Christian? For me, it depends. I mean, it could be just mindlessly grabbing something from a bag of chips, some 
Doritos or barbecue chips, or it could be uh, just some Chips Ahoy, the Chewy Chips Ahoy, or some Oreos, just dunking them in some milk, watching something nice. Just right, real pleasant to do that. Yeah. You ever do that thing where you like you, you put the fork in between the cookies on the Oreo and dunk it that way? No, I've never done that before. Yeah. It seems like a lot of work, but it also seems like it works pretty well. Okay. So maybe try that out. Give that a shot. But I'm, no pressure. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but if you wanted to hear more from myself or Mr. Christian Ashley, uh, you can go to systematicgeekology.org. Hit the drop down menu that says hosts. We have our own profiles with our other shows, other content, other episodes. And remember, we are all a chosen people. A geekdom of priests. This was an Anazao Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazao Ministries podcast network.